Hello everybody, today I've got a slightly different type of video for you. Today I am going to be reviewing a font. This is something you've not seen on this channel before that I'm aware of. I think you've seen it on Hex's channel, but not this one. Um, and actually, I do have to give a shout out to Hex because he is the person who introduced me to this very font that we're going to talk a little bit about today that you can see on your screen. Comic Mono Normal. Now, this is inspired, but doesn't really have anything to do with the Microsoft created Comic Sans, a font which I must admit I have a little bit of a soft spot for. And uh, there's a few reasons for it. Part of it is the meme status, the fact that you might see like a, a little printed out poster of some village hall meeting or something, and it's going to be all done in Comic Sans. Uh, but there are also like other more like serious reasons why Comic Sans might be considered a good font. Um, I understand that some people uh, with dyslexia actually do find Comic Sans a particularly more comfortable font to, to read, so it does have value in that regard. Now, Comic Sans, as created by Microsoft, is a proprietary font, and where possible, I do tend to prefer fonts that follow some degree of open source licenses. Uh, it's just in my nature, in my personal philosophy and politics, that information, and I think this comes, you know, and I think data and, and digital assets, whenever possible, should be as widely distributed as possible, as widely available as possible so that more people can then just put stuff together and create stuff. I think that it's good for culture, it's good for art, I think it's good for society when more people have more tools to create more things, right? It's basically a very simple philosophy in the grand scheme of things. But that aside, I mean, you've, you've had a, a few moments now just to, to soak in the gloriousness of Comic Mono Normal. Now, of course, this differs from Comic Sans particularly because it's a monospace font. Now, for those of you that don't know what a monospace font is, it's a font that kind of works in a grid formation. It is a type of font where every single letter is the exact same width. So you can do kind of grid layouts. Uh, you can see if you look at the top left hand corner here in the demonstration uh, uh, of the font, you can see that the letters A to Z in lowercase are exactly as wide as the letters A to Z in uppercase. Every single letter is the exact same width, and this makes things particularly easier easier for things like ASCII art. Um, and in fact, actually, um, I don't have any immediate ASCII art to show you, but if you go into onto my Gemini website, or you go onto the Trendy Talk website, you will see, or in fact, if you go onto a lot of Gemini sites, sorry, I call them Gemini websites, I should be calling them Gemini capsules, Gemini sites, Gemini places, I guess, uh, you can see plenty of ASCII. In fact, the, the internet is full of ASCII art. You don't need me to show you ASCII art, right? But ASCII art is done uh, more often than not using monospace fonts because uh, you, you have that control over the width. It doesn't matter what font uh, ASCII art is, is displayed in for the most part, but it is um, but but it will look the same. You'll get the same image no matter you know what 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 the monospace font is. Uh, some monospace fonts might be narrower on the whole than others, but they will always be the same across every single character in their selection. So this is it. On the left is the demonstration of the font. On the right is my website. I've I've made all the text uh, substantially bigger just so that it's easier to see on mobile phones, TVs, etc. But uh, just so you know. Um, and this is what it looks like. And this is it. In fact, what I'll do is I'll go to my useful apps and interesting websites page. This is a bit more. And yeah, this is what it looks like. It's monospace, as you can see here. All of the letters just sort of fall into kind of col columns if you look down. Like, for example, the letter I is as wide as the letter, I don't know, M over there. E and M, right? So M might look a little bit squished and the I might look a little bit wide, but on the whole, uh, I think that this particular monospace font is really fluid. I don't even think, and I would like people's thoughts in the comments section below or email in, does this look like a monospace font to you? Because to me, it doesn't look like a monospace font. It looks like just, um, just a font, right? Now, in fact, actually, if I do NeoFetch, do I have NeoFetch installed? I do have NeoFetch installed. So there we go. So that's uh, that that um, that swirl there. That's ASCII art. That's the Debian logo in ASCII art. This is my current setup, by the way. Uh, yes, I'm still on um, Linux Mint Debian Edition. 
Um, and and so far, like it's done everything that I've I've wanted it to do. So I'm I'm staying with that uh, operating system for the time being until until I need to do something that the uh, Linux Mint Debian edition cannot do. I, I guess I'm hanging around on it for now. Um, but anyhow, this is it. I think that it's beautiful. I think that it's lovely. I think that it's great to type in. There is also an additional uh, feature to this particular font. It is what's known as a programming font. And you might ask, well, what differentiates a programming font from just a regular font? And I will show you. This is why I actually have um, this up here, right? So I'm going to make the text really big. Right, there you go. That's not going to be great. So if you look at the bottom where it says Cersei at King's Dash Landing, a bit of a Game of Thrones reference there, I can type the letter lowercase o, I can type the letter uppercase o, and I can type the number zero. All three of those characters look different, right? Lowercase i, uppercase i, number one. And that's the uh, that's basically the the rationale behind it, right? Uh, is that um, oh I've made a made a mess of my old terminal there, uh, but there we go. Yeah, that's basically fundamentally the principle of a programming font is that every single character is disting is distinguishable from each other, even like letters like O zero I number one uh, lowercase L, all that kind of stuff. As you can see here, like on line lowercase L. Um, is uh an, an uppercase i there that they're all distinct they're all distinct and that uh to me is is you know that that's what makes programming font and to me i like that that's really good it's really good for things like passwords if you want to read a password you know what a password is because of the uh case is clear and the actual characters themselves are clear so uh this is a font that i think is is, is particularly wonderful uh this is the website i'm just going to show you the website here on the right hand side uh, of the actual font itself. It's a legible monospace font, the very type, uh, typeface you've been trained to recognize since childhood. This font is a fork of Shannon Miwa's comic Shans, uh, version one there. So this is the website. I will, of course, put it into the description accompanying this video. Uh, if you can see from the resolution, you can see at the top there, the URL, uh, and it is licensed under the MIT license. Oh, and just looking up there, looks like it is available in the AUR, if that's something that you're interested in. But yeah, you can just simply download it off the website there. Uh, a fantastic little uh, font there that I think that you uh, you may very well enjoy. I do use it day to day on the terminal. It just makes the terminal just a little bit more whimsically fun, I suppose, and also quite legible. It is quite a legible font for a monospace font. There are some really good monospace fonts out there, and if any of you good folks would like to recommend more fonts for me to review, or any style of video that you would actually like to see uh, come to this channel, I'm looking at trying to you know, mix up the content on the channel a little bit more. I will be doing, of course, a video talking about Linux Mint Debian Edition several uh, months on, actually. I think uh, I installed this uh, particular distribution uh, midway through December last year. So it's, you know, coming up to the best part of six months in and uh yeah it's really good really good i couldn't i couldn't ask for a better distribution i mean some of the packages are a little bit dated but in all honesty it comes in with flat packs so it fixes a lot of the problems right out of the gate anyway uh, i am digressing now uh, this has been uh, comic mono normal there are there are bold versions and so forth here as you can see you can download them that's great uh and there are other comic style mono fonts as well uh, so feel free to have a gander at those and uh, if there are any fonts that you'd like me to take a look at of course let me know so thank you very much for watching that's about it from me today and until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome toodaloo